Well, in my 60 years of observing much, most of the um, arid and subtropical parts of our continent, to me the biggest ecological factor is fire. We're a burning continent. And uh, Pip expects me to cover it in 20 minutes, um, so you'll have to read my book because it's a big subject and we could have spent the whole workshop just on fire. And it's the most important process, in my opinion, in most of Australia. Uh, number two, probably, is termites. And no one has talked about the biggest biomass in that part of Australia. We don't know practically anything about it. It is disgraceful. I don't know. We should be all sector scientists. We forget, you know, termites are the biggest biomass over much of Australia. More so than all the cattle and donkeys and everything else. Anyway, um, before we came here, this mob here were making a good living on our continent. Such a good living that they could spend a month or more conducting elaborate ceremonies. Now how many of us can have a, more than a month's holiday every year? Uh, not many, except when you're retired like I am. Um, so how did they survive and have that time? Um, they were fire stick farming the place. Now, so I thought I had the opportunity to go out with old men who walked around naked in their country when they were teenagers and learn from them all about fire management, right? So out we go and we spent a quarter of our time fixing punches through the Tanami. You know, totally unoccupied desert, no tracks. Uh, we, nearly, we nearly died a couple of times. Um, and all I got from them was, we've got to clean the country. My, my uh, tribal uh, uh, father, Charlie Charles Jubarula, uh, John Mad, I'm Jubarula, sorry. Um, we could tell where we'd been by the smoke behind us. Uh, and we just hoped we didn't get a puncture with the, the wind behind us. Uh, we had to drive through the fire to be able to fix. Uh, they just said, we've got to make the country clean. They don't like seeing old thick spinifex. And, you know, I'm pretty dumb. And it took me a long time to work out what was going on. And it's very simple. Whenever Aborigines moved, well, in my part of the world anyway, from one place to the other, which they did regularly every year, they carried a fire stick, because rubbing two sticks together is a lot of work. And anyway, you want to cook your witchetty grubs, you know, um, on the way. So I'm trying to do some fire management on one of our parks. And I'm trying to keep this bit of old spinifex from being burned, right? I've run out of matches, so I'm carrying a fire stick. This and there, when I was first starting. And I very carefully carry this fire stick through this old spinifex. And when I get to where I'm lighting up, of course, there's two fires behind me. You cannot work, walk through old spinifex or thick grass with a fire stick without lighting it up. So basically all they had to do was walk their country with a fire stick. And it happened automatically. Because you're walking through a patch that was burnt last year, the fire stick isn't going to start anything. And, you know, it depends where you are. But it might be 15 years before the spinifex is ready if you have a few droughts. 7 to 15 years in the more arid areas. And so you ended up with this beautiful mosaic, which was perfect for fire stick farming. Because the first year after you burn the spinifex, you get a lot of uh, yakira, this little grass that bilbies love and, and they use for the seed. Aborigines use for women use for seed. A cakes. Next year you get lots of solanums. The, the next year the wattles start producing seed. You know, blah, blah, blah. So if you had the mosaic of spinifex of different ages, you could afford to have one month a year off because you were living off the fat of the land. And what happened when we got back on the Tanami, they were just, because they hadn't been out there since they were teenagers, 
they were just appalled to see this thick old spinifex which is no good for anything and so they wanted to make it clean and that didn't realise that automatically it's no different to us, look, if, if we were um, lived out in the jungle or something and then came to a city um, traffic lights, what are they, you know? street signs, what are they? how do you find your way through this jungle, this jungle city? Um, yeah we do it automatically, we don't think about it, it was the same with our religion, they didn't have to think about their, fire, their land management, they had lots of other things to worry about so what can we do, like New Haven is a, a 70 it's a Australia and Wildlife Conservatory a private reserve northwest of Alice Springs you know it used to be a cattle station average size for this part of the world and they had to manage fire because 70 percent of their country is spinifex, right? Um, so I got the job of doing a veg map but what I did in the veg map and I've got a list back here of the species that tell me which are the fire sensitive communities so I made sure I mapped the fire sensitive communities the one that are killed by severe fires or frequent fires and then I got the job of doing the fire management plan now number one thing is for, for any fire management protect your facility, your house, your wooden yard, whatever that's the first thing you have to do um, but more importantly is number two is protect your fire sensitive communities because you can't replace it, you can build another house real quick to get those fire sensitive communities back will take you a, a long time if ever and if you've had a bad fire and especially if it's on a hillside you've lost your soil which happens after bad fires you're not going to get that community back you cannot get it back but because it takes thousands of years for the soil to form again so fire is the most important ecological process in most of Australia not down in that southern country where most people live I don't know about that, I couldn't, I don't care about it. Um, it's such a small fraction of, the, of this continent we live in. So the, once you've protected your fire sensitive communities, then you go back to the Aboriginal system of creating this mosaic, trying to get your spinifex in all the different ages and making sure you keep some spinifex if you can, which doesn't get any fire, and it'll go and the shrubs will take over. Guaranteed. If you can keep spinifex, fire out of spinifex for 15 years, you know, around Alice, the shrubs will take over and the spinifex will die out. Grass! As the professor here said, grass is a bad thing to run a system on because you don't get the returns. And we think we've taken over this planet grass is just using us to take over the planet what is the world's what is Australia's worst grassy weed? wheat wheat is the worst if you're thinking environmentally sugar cane, rice grass is using us to take over the world and can really only do it with fire. I mean, forget the bulldozers. Like, there's an old man on, on Kangaroo Island said to me, Well, the young fellows clear the Mallee with the bulldozers. He said, I can get rid of the Mallee if I can get two fires within 13 months. Two fires within 13 months, and I've got rid of the Mallee. I don't need a bloody bulldozer. And so, Aborigines can do the same. They knew how they could change. They don't like thick mulga because you, you can't throw a spear and a boomerang and so if they wanted to clear it they burn it out of existence but the important thing as I said is the soil the effect 
of fire on the soil is drives the whole system because I've got a beautiful old big corkwood tree on my block around Alice Springs and it died of old age. Now, you know, the importance about fire management is to have old growth trees around. And you admit old growth trees are really important, aren't they? This thing died of old age. It's taking 10 years before it is eventually going to, termites are going to put it back into the soil. And in the meantime, the reptile expert came to me and said, this is reptile heaven. Uh, you know, an area nearly half as big as this, or a third as big as this room, is now reptile heaven for 15 years till the termites have taken it all back into the soil. One fire takes it away and sterilises the ground. Nothing grows for the first year. Most of the carbon's gone in the air. Some of the nutrients are gone, you know, phosphorus and, and nitrogen are gone in the air. How, how many of you in this part of the world have seen big old trees taking 15 years to rot away? Yeah, it's pretty rare though, isn't it? You can see it in the creek. Yeah, anyway. So soil, soil is the important thing. And look, I've, I've, um, we had a, a bad fire in New Haven before they, before they uh, got to the reserve. And half, of, half the area in front of me is burnt. I climbed the hill. It's a big sand plain. Half the area of the sand plain is burnt. The other half still spinifixed. I counted 10 dust devils, willy willies, on the burned area, not one on the spinifex area. Hot fires, uh, <coughs> after hot fires, the fine, all the, the lovely nutrient fine soils ends up sometimes as on top of the snow in New Zealand. So to me, this is the most important process. Now, I thought I knew, I thought I knew everything about spinifexes in, in Australia because I've sort of wandered around here a bit, but not enough, obviously. And I'm glad you brought me here because I'm humbled. There's something going on around here which I haven't seen anywhere else in Australia. It's a unique spot. Now I hope there's no feathers and tar around the place because you might um, chase me around the block in a minute. Um, I, I'm just, I've been devastated at the drive into here. This country is, well, as my old uncle would say, impact. Too much fire. Everywhere else in Australia where there's rich soil, spin effects cannot get in because the other shrubs and grasses can outcompete it. So there's something very wrong around here. I look at the hills, especially driving halfway along, driving in, and there's no soil left on those hills. And it's going to take a bloody long time for that soil to form back on those hills before you're going to get. Those hills should be equivalent hills in, in, um, in the Tanami, can be just solid bloody shrubs and trees. The only fire sensitive plants left on the, the hills back this way, there's some more where we went last night, is a few figs in growing out of the rocks where the fire can't get to them. So, I don't know what you'd, I'd have to spend two years around here before I'd try and work out a fire management plan for this particular area of the Pilbara. It, to me, has reached almost the point of no return. And, you know, sheep first, and then bad, I don't know the fire history. And, you know, as I said, I, I'm totally out of my depth. But I'm glad I've been here because it's made me start thinking, realising that I don't know everything about spin effects when I thought I did. Um, but to go beyond that, we think we're living at a 
at t typical time of this continent for the last two million years, right? That's bullshit. We've had ice age. This is atypical climate at the moment for more than 50% of the last two million years this continent has been totally different because we were joined in New Guinea. Everything was happening at Lake, lake Carpentaria between us and New Guinea, a big freshwater lake. That's where all the megafauna would have gone. Um, we were joined to Tasmania. The Barrier Reef was a, was a plain, uh, you know, grassy plain or whatever plain. Um, so we're living in a atypical time. And it's going to get worse because we're going to have climate change which goes the other direction to what the Ice Ages <coughs> did. So we've got, we got big problems ahead of us. But I agree with this professor here that this landscape has been changed by fire. It is not a good situation. Look, at New Haven, they've had to use helicopters and you know, employ me and everything else to get to the stage where this summer, they can sit in their veranda when there's lightning storms on both sides of them and keep drinking their beer and not worrying about those lightning storms starting fires that are going to be a problem. That's a lot of work for one little bit, 1.001% of Australia. How are we going to do it for... I mean, none of you realise how big Western Australia is. Most of that country in Western Australia is not even a single bloody vehicle track. And who's managing it? It's going downhill. I drove from here, well, a bit further south. We went right through to, to the you know, South Australian Northern Territory corner there. And uh, we didn't see another, it was a track, we didn't see another vehicle for three days. It's empty. But what I saw was the fire sensitive communities going and if we don't do something we're going to end up like here where it's just going to be spin effects on all the good soils and uh, yeah and so I reckon that you know when you look at London they've dug under one of the old buildings there and they found bones of rhinoceroses, um, wolves, bears, what's that big hairy elephant? Mammoth. Mammoth. Where London now is. So when humans first came to that area, that was the animals that were dominating that area. So wherever we go, we take fire with us and grass uses us to change the landscape. And I'm, my next book, which is going to be quite controversial if I ever publish it, if I'm game enough, is to say that fire has created the deserts in Australia and before fire we weren't a desert. 